Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, hello, my name is Skylar. I am a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. Today we're gonna be talking about why some vets aren't a fan of the raw diet and how to talk to your vet about it if you're interested in incorporating raw into your pet's diet or switching over to a raw food completely. Now, raw feeding is not at all new. While it may seem like a trend or a fad to be feeding your dogs raw today, this is actually what we've been doing for the majority of history. Dogs have been domesticated for about 16,000 years, and we first came in contact with dogs about 30,000 years ago. And that's a lot of time to be feeding our companions. In fact, commercial pet food wasn't even invented until the 20th century. Commercial canned food for dogs came out in 1922, and kibble wasn't invented till the mid-1950s, so the fact of feeding canned or kibble food is very, very new. So if we've been feeding raw and fresh foods for so long, why do so many vets have a problem when we come into their office and mention that we're feeding a raw diet? Well, while raw feeding isn't necessarily new, the research into raw feeding has some catching up to do. While commercial raw pet foods and more information is much more abundant than it's ever been thanks to the internet and consumer awareness, that hasn't always been the case. A lot of pet parents have tried DIY raw pet food with varying levels of success. This has caused some vets to become very jaded to the idea of raw pet food after having to treat malnourished dogs that were fed a unbalanced homemade raw diet. Additionally, when we hear raw meat, we all have that little red flag going off in our head telling us, oh no, salmonella, that could make us sick. These are all things that are totally valid concerns, but today we're gonna to talk about some of the reasons why that's not necessarily the case anymore, as well as how you can talk to your vet about incorporating a raw diet into your routine if you're interested. When someone tells me that their vet doesn't want them feeding a raw diet, the reason their vet gave is usually one of two things. Either one, it's not gonna be complete and balanced, they're not gonna be getting all the vitamins and nutrients that they need, or two, raw foods carry pathogens like E. coli, listeria, and salmonella, and is dangerous to be feeding. Let's talk about the first concern. Are raw pet foods complete and balanced? The answer really depends on what raw pet food you're feeding. If you're feeding a commercial raw pet food like Primal, or Stella and Chewy's, or Northwest Naturals, or Small Batch, or Vital Essentials, or any of those other brands that you can buy at your local independent pet store or online, chances are, they are complete and balanced. And chances even more are that they're complete and balanced according to AFCO's standards. This means that these raw pet foods meet the same requirements of vitamins and minerals and nutrients as any other AFCO approved kibble. When feeding these commercial raw pet foods, you're gonna get all of the vitamins and minerals that you need and you're still getting those benefits from the raw. Now issue number two is that food safety piece. Now, the FDA in 2011 decided that pet food cannot have any traces of pathogens, no salmonella, no E. coli, and no listeria, or else they have to be recalled. This was part of their big food safety push. Now, because of that, raw pet food cannot have any traces of salmonella, listeria, or E. coli, or they will be recalled, and they are tested frequently. For reference, the meats in your grocery store, according to the FDA, can have up to 4% pathogens like listeria, salmonella, and E. coli. This is because these meats are intended to be cooked, whereas commercial raw pet food is intended to be fed as is in its raw state. So with all the testing that they do, both independently and from third-party laboratories, these foods must be safe and must not contain E. coli, salmonella, or listeria. This does not by any means mean that you should skimp out on any of those safety and hand-washing measures that you take when preparing your raw food but having a raw diet in your house is much safer than bringing in grocery store meats like chicken or beef. Additionally, about 36% of average healthy adult dogs are already carriers of salmonella regardless of what they're fed. So whether you're feeding kibble or a raw diet, you still have that chance of running into salmonella while picking up your dog's poop. Another great reason why we should be practicing good hygiene and an abundance of caution regardless of what we're feeding. Now that we've debunked those two reasons why your vet may not want you to be feeding raw, let's talk about how to bring up the topic of raw with your vet. Now, newer vets that may have a little bit more experience with raw food or the importance of proper nutrition in a pet's diet may be more open to raw. For example, I have plenty of vets in my area 
that do use raw and support raw feeding. In fact, a number of those vets actually require raw feeding as part of their treatment plan for different things like cancer and kidney disease and urinary issues. Meanwhile, some older vets or vets that maybe have not kept up to date with some of the newer information regarding raw may not know these things and may need that additional information brought to them. The very first thing I recommend you doing is come to the table fully informed. I always recommend getting your information from multiple sources and doing your research. This is a very important step because you don't want to go in there saying, I saw some woman on YouTube talking about raw food, that's why I want to feed raw. Because you need to give yourself some more credit about that. I want you to go out, do your research, bring in some articles, learn about raw feeding, the pros, the cons, and go into the vet's office fully informed with your opinion. If your vet brings up any of the points that we talked about in this video, now you have a little bit of background information as well as all of the research that you're going to be doing after this video to be able to discuss with them that you understand all of the risks associated with raw feeding as well as all the benefits, how to do it, the different types of raw feeding, and your plan for going forward. If you're able to go into your vet's office fully informed and maybe even teaching your vet something, they're gonna feel much more comfortable knowing that your dog is in the hands of someone who actually knows what they're doing and they can feel more confident with treatment going forward. Now, it is 100% the job of you and your vet to monitor your dog and make sure that they're still doing great on their new diet, regardless of what you're feeding, whether you're switching kibbles, you're switching from kibble to raw, however you're feeding, whatever you're feeding, you wanna work as a team with your vet to make sure that you're taking care of your dog and that they are thriving. This means that you're going in regularly, you're getting blood work when you need it, and you're doing your job at home by making sure that your pet is acting normal, passing their stool fine, and bringing up any potential concerns to your vet. I also highly recommend scheduling an appointment with your vet just to talk about your pet's food. Yes, we can always kind of throw it in at the end of an appointment, but vets are very busy and they typically only schedule to see you for whatever they need to do. So being able to schedule ahead of time a whole session just where you can talk about your pet's food and nutrition and your goals for their food and nutrition gives a great opportunity where the vet knows this is what we're going for, we can schedule accordingly. This gives you the opportunity to really talk about your plans with your vet, make sure that you're both on the same page, everything's great, they can answer your questions, and you can answer some of theirs. I do get a lot of questions asking how to talk to your vet about raw diets, or people who are wanting to feed raw but their vet just isn't in support of the raw diet, and I hope this video really helps you kind of get a jumping off point for there in starting the conversation and moving forward. I think this is a great example that there's always new information coming out and there's always something new to learn. So if you're able to get as much information as possible and share that with your vet, that is fantastic and I think that'll get you pretty far. If you liked this video, if you found this helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And you can also follow me on Instagram if you like. I do have two Instagrams, first being tattooed.dogtrainer, which is more of my personal side of things and also my YouTube stuff. And then you can also follow my dog training account, that's tattooed.dogtrainer. I share a lot of training tips as well as food and nutrition tips there. We are celebrating Rawgust this month on my channel, a month full of different raw feeding videos. If you haven't checked any of those videos out yet, I highly recommend that you check out the playlist all about raw feeding. It should give you a really great jumping off point for your own research. Be sure to comment down below any other videos that you'd like to see, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.